How's it going, guys? It is 2.36 a.m. Wednesday, June 15th, 2022 here in Japan, and we have an unusual question that it's not my fucking opinion. It's on the Internal Medicine Form 5 for 2CK. So if you have disagreements, don't take it up with me. Take it up with the NBME exam, all right? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below, and I'll start the clip. 54-year-old man has a two-week history of increased urinary frequency and thirst. Vitals are within normal limits. Mucous membranes are dry. Serum calcium elevated at 14.1 milligrams per deciliter, normal range 8.4 to 10.2. Phosphorus low at 2.2 milligrams per deciliter, normal range 2.5 to 4.5. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for the patient's volume depletion and polyuria. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, barter syndrome, wrong fucking answer. Never seen it, asked on US simile, maybe once, okay? once on one of the NBME, NBME assessments somewhere. The yieldness through the fucking floor, okay? It's essentially the equivalent of being on a loop diuretic. That's what you could know, okay? It's just a syndrome that the patient is going to present as if he or she is on a loop diuretic. And for whatever fucking reason, you can get juxtaglomerular cell hyperplasia. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, chronic pyelonephritis, wrong answer. This is almost always going to be pediatrics where you have some sort of congenital anatomic defects, defect such as posterior urethral valves, some sort of congenital uh, ureteral or urethral obstruction. Okay, so recurrent acute pyelonephritis can cause chronic pyelonephritis where we get tubular atrophy. That's asked, okay, tubular atrophy uh, for the step one exams. It's high yield. Uh, blunting and scarring of the renal calluses, okay, thyroidization of the kidney. You can also get it in theory in pregnancy, okay, if you've had a recurrent acute pyelonephritis. Point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. Choice C, Gittleman syndrome, wrong answer. Similar to Barter syndrome, when students don't know an answer, they tend to choose weird sounding shit. Gittleman syndrome is the uh, equivalent of being on a thiazide diuretic, okay? So I've never seen this asked. Okay, it's just students get fanatical about fancy sounding syndromes. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, interstitial nephropathy, wrong answer, albeit exceedingly high yield. This is almost always going to be an NSAID, beta lactam, cephalosporin causing eosinophils in the urine, white blood cells in the urine, rash in 50% of patients. Okay, so that's your classic presentation here. You can get peripheral edema in the setting of NSAIDs especially. There's one question on the step one NBMEs where they just say patient uh, has been on NSAIDs for a while, has proinuria and hematuria, and they don't say anything else, nothing about eosinophils like I just said, and you eliminate to get there, and the answer is interstitial nephropathy, okay? Very high yield diagnosis for eosinophily. In this case, it's the wrong fucking answer. Tracy, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, the correct answer. Now you say, well, that's really fucking weird. Like, what's going on here? Okay, well, this patient clearly has primary hyperparathyroidism. And for whatever fucking reason, hypercalcemia is one of the causes of nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, okay? So we learn of high-yield causes like lithium, okay, demiclocycline. Also, NSAIDs can do it. That's asked on the NBME exams. And hypercalcemia. If you Google hypercalcemia, nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, you'll see straight up just as hypercalcemia can cause renal damage, especially nephrogenic DI, mechanism not fully understood, okay? And as I prefaced with, I mean, this is on internal medicine form five. If you think it's nitpicky and weird, it's not my fucking opinion. So when you do the two CK forms, you're going to see this pop up. And the answer is going to be nephrogenic DI, okay? And I mean, that's all you really need to know here. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.